right, so now that we covered Scott's inferior list of games and his inferior amount of time spent gaming, we're gonna talk about my year in gaming analyzed and we're gonna go through, <laughs> we're gonna go through all the genres I played, all the consoles I played, the amount of time I put in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can break it down real easy. Save you guys a lot of time. PS4, survival horror. PS5, survival horror. And then some co-op games that people want to play that's usually like, fine, it's not survival horror. Sure. Done, till well, next time. Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna start action adventure. We have Luigi's Mansion Dark Mode. Oh, who stacked these games? Almost fell. First grab. I stacked them. I don't know what you did with them after that. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Shadow of the Colossus, Control, and Somerville, which is a Game Pass game. I don't have a physical copy of because there is no physical copy. Somerville, I'm gonna right off the bat. Uh, Play Dead. I'm sorry, I loved Limbo and Inside. Um, didn't like it. It was disjointed and uh, terrible. So I will not play that again. I'm happy I don't have a physical copy and I won't be looking Better for one. Better luck next time. And I feel bad saying that, but yeah, it's just not for me. Also not for me, Shadow of the Colossus. I just felt like I was trying to get through this game because I put it on my list of 10 games I was gonna beat this year. Control gave me a bit of problems for a little bit, but in the end, I actually really, really enjoyed this game, and it was a great suggestion from Captain Algebra, so hey, thank buddy. you for that. Captain Algebra here. Loved, really got me at the end, and if you like Luigi's Mansion, the first one, you'll like Dark Moon. It's basically the same game, just a little bit different. Overall, not a bad category for me, definitely not the best. Your opinion. My opinion. We are moving on to beat em ups. It basically a carbon copy of Scott stuff with a. Because they're all co op games. Yeah, just with a few missing that he played that I didn't. Uh, we have Streets of Red, Mother Russia Bleeds, Golden Axe 2, Final Fight 2, and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Boom, boom. Shredder's Revenge was a real hot topic this year, and I actually really, really enjoyed the game. Golden Axe 2. I, I had a lot first of fun time with playing it. First you, right? time playing it. And a lot of these are the first time playing for me. Same yep. thing with Final Fight 2. I really enjoyed it. Yep. I think I like Streets of Red more than you did. I think you did. Yes. Yeah. And Mother Russia Bleeds was really good. We didn't get the good ending on that. Yes, either. we didn't get the good ending no. on that either. If I had to pick one I enjoyed the most, it would be a toss up between these two. When I do play a retro game, especially if I'm playing a co op, I really enjoy my time. We did actually play um, River City Ransom. We didn't play through it, but we played quite a bit of that, and I really enjoyed what we played of it. Like we I, finish that we off, have to finish that off, and that's not going to be included in this list because this is a list yeah. of games we can complete. <clears throat> Again, not a bad category for me, and I had a lot of fun. Overall, here. pretty much all good. Yeah, pretty much all good. I don't have anything to complain about in this list. We have Hack and Slash, and I have one game. Wow! God of War Two really liked this game. Really hated the quick so time event at the end that made me rage through the house. It can't be that intimidating when a five foot three woman stops through the house going, fuck this, this fucking yeah. game. Because I'm still high pitched even when I'm mad. Just... <laughs> He's trying to rage through the house and then comes back downstairs and me and Alex are fucking trying not to lie. I'm no, looking at that... Alex. And... Oh no, don't fucking get her going there. I can't hold back. Horror games. I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> Not enough room on the table here. I have 17 horror games. And when I say horror, I mean survival, uh, psychological, story driven, things like that. If they're in the horror realm, I've included them. So I have Manhunt 2, Resident Evil 5, Obscure, In Nightmare, Haunting Ground. Scott's not going to be able to keep up. Creeping Terror is a digital only. Oh, uh, the Quarry, Martha is Dead, Oxide Room 104. Settle down. Dark plus the DLC, Silent Hill 2, Resident Evil 4 on the VR, and I have played the original. Well, that. It's on the VR. Uh, Cold okay. Fear. Head of you now. Remother Broken Porcelain, Never Ending Nightmare, Phobia, St. Dinfa's Hotel, or however the fuck you pronounce that and infliction. I sleep with one eye open. 
<laughs> I guess you do. Oh man, I'll trade it. I don't. I didn't like it. Dead to you. It's dead to me. Or it's dead to me. Yeah, yeah. In Nightmare was only mediocre. And trade the damn thing. I know, and I might eventually, but you know, I'm always like, it'll go up in value and then I'll get a better game. <laughs> that was an expensive one, but I fucking loved it. It was really, really, really good. Not many of these on the table I didn't enjoy. Uh, this was a psychological horror. It was interesting. Art style in this was interesting. Art style was very interesting. Very cool. Black and white and the blood was red. So it was just very monochromatic. Uh, Obscure was a fantastic co-op game, as was Resident Evil 5, no matter what you say, I enjoyed it. Oxide 104 didn't get a lot of love, but I know that me and uh, Brandon enjoyed it, and that's all it ma that matters. Manhunt 2 was uh, different, but I liked it. <laughs> very sexual <laughs> at times, or <laughs> whatever he did. Dark. Very little nightmares. Re-mother broken porcelain, a, pro a broken version of the first broken game. game. There was areas that were challenging to get through, but I actually didn't it overall mind it. The quarry was a great play. Cold Fear needs a remake because muddy graphics and like tank controls. Silent Hill 2, so fucking excited. I hope they do the remake proud. Infliction extended cut. I slept on this for a while and it's really, really good. I really enjoyed it. It was, at the end, you could walk through her museum of art, which I thought was so interesting. All the art you'd see in the home and, it, and it's a psychological horror game. That really struck me. And uh, Phobia St. Dinfus Hotel, I really enjoyed this one as well. I know it's probably not going to be everybody's favorite, but I really, really had fun with it. So that's as fast as I could talk about that. Metroidvania has won. Until next year, I'll have another one. Uh, ho, ho, ho. I don't know why I didn't play this before. I didn't realize how much I love- you have you had tried it? Did I you, had or played you it. seen me play nope, a little bit of it? I played a little bit of it, just yeah. kind of threw it in. I was like, oh, this is a pretty good game. I'll eventually play it. And then I didn't for whatever reason. And I played what everybody would classify as the inferior version of this because PS4 less slow down, screen slow down. Oh, frame on the Yeah, oh, yeah. with the PS4 version. Dennis played that, he really enjoyed it. I got the good ending only because I played uh, Symphony of the Night and I'm like, okay, I'm on to you Metroidvanias. You, you, that first ending is never your good ending. Yeah. So when I went in and I beat who I thought was the boss. I was like, oh shit, I don't think that was right. And so I, I had been saving lots and lots. Luckily, I could go back to my last save point and I was like, I need to find out if this is a bad ending. And I did, but I looked very few things up. Well, yeah, I think it was like towards the end of the game where you were like looking up uh, certain items to try to get the best weapon. Yeah, yeah. Like that. that was basically it. That was basically it. I, <clears throat> I know I unlocked more than 99% of the map. There was a small, sliver of, I don't know, an inkling of an idea of maybe I try to 100% this game, but I don't want a game to overstay its welcome for the simple fact of like just being a trophy hunter and completing it. I want to put the amount of time into a game that it still feels fun. I don't want to ruin that experience. And I feel like that would have happened. I would have ruined it a bit. Sure. Yeah. You were how many hours into that? Probably 20 plus? 20, yeah, 20 something. Yeah. It was awesome. Platformers, which is well, basically the, the same as Scott, except for I played Shovel Knight with Dennis. So My recommendation. Yes. Chippendale Rescue Ranger, Shovel Knight, New Super Mario Bros. on wow. the Wii. We have Mercenary Kings, Trine 4, all the Trines. Trying time. And Broforce. And he thought that was my last category, but he round. So much fun. So much fun. Uh, awesome game. Like, I watched them, I watched her, her and Dennis play through it, and yeah. I was laughing. My yeah. Uh, two player, there are benefits, and then there are uh, challenges. challenges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's, you can play through it single player, and then go ahead and play it with a friend, and it's Almost a different feel of the game. It, yeah, 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 I can see that. I like um, to see you play through it by yourself. Oh my fuck! Onslaught of all the bosses you beat at, at the, the end. end. Awesome. I don't know if I could do that by myself. Oh, I did it. You can beat in almost any game. It's just a matter of like figuring it to out. To that end, 
Yeah. Fucking almost rage quit this game. <laughs> it's under co-op in mine because that's how I beat it, but my partner didn't make it to the end. And yeah. then you had to play it by yourself to beat it because you had to get it on your list. So yes. This one, I assume you have it under single player? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is always a fun time. That was fucking blast. Most of that I was whatever. Definitely play Mercenary Kings again. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. I, it was so I, cool. These three right here in the front and Pro Force. Oh yeah. And RPG. <gasps> I played two RPGs this year. Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Which Perfect. one's better? Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh -oh. For a long time, I wouldn't, I was like, well, no, the first one, because why, I wouldn't love the second one as much if I didn't know, and now I'm almost talking myself out of thinking that way. <sighs> if I had to just go on standalone gameplay, and I didn't know if I could erase my memory and didn't know the lore of it, while I really was excited to see some different places from the original game recreate it in the remake, the gameplay in the remake was more for me. Yeah. I think I might be more of an action RPG girl. I really like being able to move around the screen and yeah, it's, I know some people, you either love it or hate it, I think. A real- uh, I think the hardcores love this. And they're like, And then when they get to that one, this is, they, it's, yeah, it's, it's too different. different. But I, I still haven't played through this You one. haven't, and how many times I know. have I said that? Bugging me. I know. I, I really, but I really loved both of them. This, this had a more of an emotional pull on my heartstrings because I, in there. yes. Yeah. And it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Was this as challenging? No, no, it wasn't nearly as challenging. Yeah. So I, but I, oh, it's so good. <laughs> so good. The, they took the music from this one and then just made it better, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, guys. So my opinion might be wrong, but I know. Who do I know? What do I know? When do I know? How do I know? Let her know in the comments. Let me know. A shooter, one shooter, Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2. Well, bye bam Went back and forth on this. I was like, is that really a shooter? Cause there's like elements of horror in it too, but not really. Ones. But I really enjoyed Half-Life 2. When I started the game, it gave me a bit of nausea from the, frame especially, rate. yeah, the boat and the frame rate and stuff. And it was bothering me a bit. I played this because it was one of my picks for the games I need to beat in 2022. And it was convenient because I could play it upstairs and Teddy was a baby. And I needed to have eyes on him constantly. And he would sleep on my feet and I'd play Half-Life 2. It was cute. But uh, that game only got better as it went on. Okay. As a game should. If you put the best parts in the first and then it shits the bed at the end. Oh, yeah. But it got, it, it like ramped up and was so much more as it went on. And I thoroughly enjoyed Half-Life 2. It was a good experience. You get to break it down. Break it down. 41 games I played this year. 41. 33, 41. I really wanted to do 42 because I'm somebody I know is 42. I couldn't get that last game in. 41.5% of my time when I played games was uh, playing horror games. And that was 499 hours. I played almost 500 hours of gaming. We have a uh, shooter Metroidvania hack and slash coming in all at 2.4% because I just played one of those games each. RPG is 4.9, because I only played two games. Beat em ups, action adventure, neck and neck again, 12.2, and platformers at 22. And there's a lot of co op, co -op in that games, category. Yeah. Hours played in each genre. I played 146 hours of horror, so you know why he wants to sleep with one eye open. And uh, I didn't miss any sleep. <laughs> I slept like a baby, it was great. That's not the best analogy. Babies sleep terribly, but I slept yeah. pretty good. Screamed the whole night. Yeah. The second most played was RPG, but RPGs Barely, tend whoa, to be big. Yeah, what is right? that Final Fantasy VII? What does that ring Oh, Oh, 60 hours I played 60 on that. 60 plus, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something. What do I have here? 60 hours. And then the new one's like 30 something. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake I played for 50. 50 hours. And I played 110 hours, babe. Platformers at 108. The least amount of time I spent was in Hack and Slash at 15, and that's from that one game, from God of War 2. Moving on from there, console game breakdown. I played 10 PS4 games, so he wasn't necessarily wrong. And then I was I, just gonna go, she told me to go get the games, I was just gonna grab the shelf, PS4 games. Shelf, and then seven PS5 games, and six on the Switch, and then down from there, like we're talking threes and, and lower. I played all, mostly on PS4 and PS5. Not shocked. Not shocked. Not shocked at all. We're not shocked at all. I played 
over 100 hours on the PS4 and like 80 some hours on the PS5 and Switch was in the 60 hour range. But I played on the PS1 because of Final Fantasy VII, 60 hours and everything past that was like it's 30 and under your hours. only PS1 game. Eh? It's my only PS1 game yeah. for a total of 499 hours played. It's yeah. crazy. Gaming habits because uh, Scott wanted to throw this in to make himself feel better. My co-op games were, let me get closer, 39% and my single player games were 61%. Or I can't see green. I, I might be colorblind. Dennis, help me out. Retro versus modern, 12.2% <laughs> retro to 87.8% modern. And it doesn't get better when we break it down single player, retro versus single player, modern. When she has a choice to play a game just herself, nobody's influencing what game she plays. 88% of the time I play a single player modern game, I don't care. I it's just, what you like, whatever it's you like. what I like. like. Yeah, I'd I like to tease you, but. I know, and you know what? I have to stop making apologies for it, and I think it's because we're retro rivals. I really want to love retro games, but they make yeah. me a crazy bitch. Got no patience for them. I got no patience. No. I got no patience. I automatically assume it's gonna be hard. So my gaming 2022 year in review. I gamed 5.7% of the time, which is up from Scott's 4.6. I was working 22% of the time, which is up from Scott's 21, but I slept 27% of the time, which is up from Scott's 25, I think. I think my 25 is a bit high. I, I wasted 45.3% of the time not gaming. This is a fucking waste of time. Is what just trying is. to live. Most hours spent on a single player game, and we said this a few times, was Final Fantasy VII at 60 hours or 12% of my games. My top three single player games in no particular order because- Oh, wait, you want to put them in order? No, you wouldn't put yours in order. I put like, the third one. Yeah, okay, the well then the one. third one would be Final Fantasy VII Remake. I really enjoyed it, but not as much as I enjoyed Bloodstain or Resident Evil 4 on the VR. I don't know which one of those I like better and they're different categories, different genres, so I'm not gonna choose. I don't know, it was a good time. Martha is Dead, Somerville, and Shadow of the Colossus. I we were gonna make people mad at the Shadow of the Worst Colossus. Worst three single player games. I'm sorry. Had I just I didn't enjoy it. It doesn't mean it's a bad game. Yeah. It just wasn't your kind of game. And I didn't feel like I picked it because I told myself these were iconic, yeah. retro kind of games. I Did was... you ask the community for suggestions? No, you no. came down and helped me. I came down and helped yeah. you. You can blame that one on okay, me. Okay, that's Scott's fault. <laughs> but had I played that back when it came out, maybe I would have felt differently. I will not discredit that it was a beautiful game. The scenery was beautiful, but it just didn't have enough for me. I was traveling somewhere to beat a Colossus, coming back, ooh, cutscene. Traveling somewhere to beat a Colossus, coming back, ooh, cutscene. It was the end of the game that even redeemed it enough to be okay. Oh yeah. That was, that was it for me personally. Not everybody's gonna like the same games. That's just it. Top three best co-op games, little bit different than Scott's, Mercenary Kings, Obscure, and Trine 4. I fucking laughed my ass off during Trine 4, and I appreciated that. I really, really had a fun time. No surprise to anybody, worst co-op game was Trine 3, as was Scott's, right? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, it was a glitchy game. I did laugh lots. It was either a laugh or cry situation yeah. because we were trying to get through them because nobody, somebody just, we gotta beat them all. We gotta get them all done well, before the end of the year. Well, we had <laughs> we had gone that far. Did you want to just go, well, we won't bother playing that one for the last I three suppose. hours? Right? Yeah. So that was our analyzing our gaming year. What are your goals for next year? Because that's what you asked me, so you must have an answer if you asked me that. My goals for next year are to play what I want. I can't make myself a retro gamer. If I'm feeling inspired to play a retro game, if it's on, if it's kind of like, hey, you know what, I feel like playing this. I feel like I keep trying that's all because, I of, ever do. because of YouTube uh, to play a retro game because I feel like that's what the community wants, but what do I want? And I have to have fun doing it or else it's just work and I don't want gaming to be work. And I hope you guys understand that. There will still be retro games that I want to play, but oh, I, yeah. I need them to be what I want to play. I think it just, I think you need to play games that are in your genre. Or you need, yes. need survival horror games that are, 
like some PS1 and some yeah. other horror stuff, I think you would enjoy that. I know fun. I would. I know yeah. I would. So I just have to, I have to focus on that more than anything else. Just having fun yeah. gaming and everything else is whatever. I see you continuing on with your survival horror theme. I want to play more Metroidvania. And then that was what I was going to say next. I see you being on the hunt for more games that are Metroidvania. I have a loose kind of goal to play through all the God of Wars. I don't know if that's happening in 2023. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed both videos. Try it next year. Maybe you'll like it too. You'll I like would love, I think the analytics is kind of interesting. So I'd love to see, like, especially all like, YouTuber friends there that we're yeah. constantly seeing the games you guys pick up and everything. I'd love to know the analytics of what kind and of what games you guys you play. played. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Until next time, we have no beer to chug. Don't worry about mine. Until next time, game on. <laughs>